Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to share some useful information to help you prepare for the NAC OSCE. Along with the MCC QE1, the NAC OSCE is a required examination that you'll need in order to be eligible to apply for residency training in Canada. I'll structure this video into three parts. First, what is a NAC OSCE? Second, what resources I would recommend? And finally, tips for the exam. So the NAC examination is a one-day exam that assesses your readiness to enter a Canadian residency program. It's a national standardized examination that tests knowledge and skills that are essential to working as a doctor in Canada. This exam is only for IMGs hoping to enter a Canadian residency program. Now, most people who've gone through medical school are already familiar with the OSCE or objective structured clinical examination style of questions. The NAC exam is an OSCE exam and consists of a series of stations where you're presented with a typical clinical scenario. Each station is about 11 minutes long with two minutes between stations. This exam is very similar to the MCC QE2. If you successfully match into a residency program in Canada, you'll have to take the MCC QE2 in your first or second year of residency. Now, you can worry about MCC QE2 once you've started residency in Canada. The only two exams you need to focus on before applying to residency are the MCC QE1 and the NAC OSCE. So anyways, let's get back to the NAC OSCE. At each station, a brief written statement will introduce a clinical problem and will outline your tasks. The tasks could be to take a history, describe a physical examination, or interpret some test results. You may also be asked to counsel a patient about topics such as the importance of blood sugar control in diabetes or breastfeeding. In each station, there'll be at least one standardized patient and an examiner. The NAC OSCE will include questions related to medicine, surgery, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, psychiatry, pre preventative medicine, and public health. You'll be rated by the examiner on up to seven different competencies per station. These competencies will include the quality of your history taking, your diagnosis, management, communication skills, physical examination, investigations, and data interpretation. Before we go on to strategies for preparing for this exam, if you're finding this video useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Also, if you know anyone else who may find this video useful, please don't forget to share it with them. So let's get into how I would recommend you prepare for the NAC OSCE. First, I would recommend forming a study group with others who are sitting the exam. You can find study partners locally or abroad by joining IMG groups on Facebook or other social media platforms. Given the amazing video conferencing, conferencing capabilities we have nowadays, you could easily form a study group with people living on the other side of the world if needed. For this exam, it's extremely important to practice these stations with other students and be able to verbalize what you're going to say to the patient as well as what you're going to do during your physical examinations. Once you actually enter the exam, if you haven't had enough practice verbalizing your history taking and examinations, you'll find it so much more difficult doing this under the pressure of the exam. Okay, so what are the resources I would rec recommend for this exam? I recommend finding a few good resources and not bogging yourself down with too many books and web links. Like always, I would first recommend using any medical school notes you may have relating to history taking and physical examinations. Similar to what I said for the MCC QE1 video, your own medical school notes will be familiar to you and you'll be essentially revisiting topics you've already studied and working through things that you've already sort of studied and become efficient with. Next, the book I would recommend is called NAC OSCE. A comprehensive review. This book goes through various topics and scenarios that you can use with your study group to practice. It's quite comprehensive, so if you can get through this entire book, you'll be good, in good shape for the exam. Next, since the NAC OSCE is very similar to the MCC QE2 examination, 
I would recommend going back to the Canada Q Bank site and signing up for the MCC QE question bank. This question bank is quite pricey, so if you have a study group, you could potentially share the cost of membership among your study group. Finally, the USMLE Step 2 CS is somewhat comparable to the NAC OSCE and MCC QE2. UWorld has a very good resource for the USMLE Step 2 CS, which you could also use as part of your revision for the NAC OSCE. I would avoid signing up for this until you've totally completed all of the questions from the NAC OSCE book as well as the Canada Q Bank. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's all the resources I would recommend using for this exam. The most important thing I would recommend for this exam is to get a lot of practice. Practice as much as you can with your study partner or study group so that you internalize your vocabulary and examinations until it becomes second nature. This way, you'll be sure to perform at your best during the actual exam. Now, let's move on to some tips and tricks for this exam. Tip number one, create a study schedule so that you can keep yourself on track with your studying and this will ensure that you get through all the needed topics before the exam day. Tip number two, if you are unfamiliar with the format of OSCEs, then consider taking a course that helps you prepare for the OSCE exam. Keep in mind that most courses are designed to help you with the exam taking skills and not the actual medical content. If you're already familiar with the OSCE style of exams from your own medical school, then I would not recommend taking a course. Tip number three, make sure to read the question stem and only do what they have asked you to do. Your time is limited. For example, if the question asks you to complete a physical examination of the knee, don't take a history of knee pain. Tip number four, don't miss the urgency of any situation. So for example, you may get a station where they say, Mr. Smith arrived in your office complaining of chest pain and shortness of breath. Please take a history. In this case, just to show that I'm aware of the potentially serious situation, I would consider starting off the answer by saying, this could be something serious, and before I take a history, I want to make sure I get a set of vitals, get some supplemental oxygen on the patient, and order an urgent EKG for Mr. Smith. While I'm doing all of this, I will start taking the history, and then you can start begin taking the history. This will show that you're practicing as a safe doctor. Tip number five, avoid counseling a patient with generic information. For example, a station may ask you to counsel Mr. Smith on his diabetes ma management. Here, avoid saying generic statements like, Mr. Smith, your poorly controlled diabetes could put you at risk of complications. Instead, be more specific. You could instead say, Mr. Smith, poorly controlled diabetes could put you at certain risks such as micro and ma macrovascular complications. These microvascular complications could involve retinopathy, where your eyes are affected, neuropathy, where your peripheral nerves are affected, and nephropathy, where your kidney function is affected, etc., etc. So it's being a bit more specific. Tip number six. If you are sitting for the NAC OSCE, then you are not yet a doctor in Canada. Don't introduce yourself as Dr. So-and-so. Just introduce yourself by your name. Tip number seven, arrive early and make sure you get yourself organized so that you know where you'll be starting. You don't want to arrive just in time or late for the exam and be flustered entering your first station. Tip number eight, wear a mask and make sure you sanitize your hands as you enter the exam room. This could be either using the sink to wash your hands or using alcohol sanitizer to clean your hands as you enter. Do not take your mask off unless explicitly asked to do so. Tip number nine. Because of the current COVID rules, don't actually perform the physical exam on the patient actor. Just verbally state what you would be doing to the patient and what you would be looking for in the physical examination. This may change as COVID-19 rules change. Make sure to review the latest guidelines on the MCC website. So that's it guys. 
If you have any further questions or comments, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Good luck with your revision and I'll see you guys in the next one.